Hey, it's Cynthia, and yep, you caught me. I'm still in my house coat. Usually for me, that means it's going to be a good day, right? But what happened today is um, I got up early and got started, and everything I'm doing is turning into a longer thing. I'm sure you've had days like that, right? But I wanted to um, talk to you a few minutes about um, the topic of being saved. And what does it mean to be saved? I've had people say, what do you mean be saved? And, you, you know, we speak in religious ease so much and we have a tendency to understand what that means but we have a hard time using non-religious words to express our experiences and the benefits of salvation and so I, I just wanted to think about that for a minute when we say that we're saved we're brought into god's family right and we become either his son or his daughter and um, our identity changes, and it's nothing sort, short of revolutionary or miraculous. Um, at least it should be. Um, but the pressures and the responsibilities uh, and the monotony of our life and the daily grind has a way of shifting our focus away from who we truly are. And we begin, again, to go back to focus on uh, the slave-like uh, responsibilities and must-do lists, right? So I wanted to, to, to share with you about um, most Christians really never ever appreciate truly um, who they are and the benefits of salvation and truly really grasp, oh, I get a picture of myself if I move my head, um, who truly really grasp um, who they are um, because of their salvation, and so um, from birth, we're programmed by our environment and the people in our lives and the experiences that we experience. We interpret the meaning of those life experiences, sometimes when we're very small, even before we can form words. And so we set in our life these beliefs that set us up for our way of living. So we've, re we've many of us have, have uh, experienced, I know I particularly did, uh, rejection and abandonment, some of us abuse. I um, suffered with some neglect and um, from my earliest childhood. And entrenched in us, they become um, our belief system and an attitude that says, I, I have no value, I don't measure up, I'm not enough, I'm unlovable, I'm not worth it, um, lots of things along those lines. So even those who have had a wholesome, what we would say a wholesome, leave it to be their boy, I'm naming myself there, right? In the perfect childhood, we still um, form beliefs that are not consistent with who God says that we are and his plan and purpose for our life. So without exception, all people uh, that I have counseled, every person that I have, some people say, well, Cynthia, does everybody you know have this? And I say, well, I don't know everybody, but everyone that I've ever counseled with, anyone who I've ever prayed with, anyone that I've ever dealt with has had these um, unscriptural, um, ungodly, um, wrong alignment beliefs, and they've formed their lives around these s systems, and the enemy has used them to keep them in bondage. So it's important to recognize that these faulty beliefs that we're believing, and we need to align our believing with um what God says. And that's what we're doing in this series, in this Bible study titled, Who I Am, uh, Discovering Our Biblical Identity. So in Genesis uh, 2, 7, the scripture tells us that the Lord formed the man and the woman from the dust of the ground, right? Some of this is going to be my version, but, and he breathed the breath of life into their nostrils. I would just think that's so awesome because I asked the Lord many times to come and breathe the breath of life in me again. And they became a living being. And Adam and Eve, we know uh, as the story goes on in Genesis 2, he told them not to eat of the, the one tree and they did. And God said that if they ate of it, they would die, but they still still lived. And I, I just really struggled with that for a long time when I was a first, um, a Christian, but we know that that means that their spirit died, that they, be, they were created as eternal beings. And because of the choice that Adam made, the one man made one choice for all of humankind, they died spiritually. And so we know that, um, that everyone born into this world is physically alive. Yes. Um, they were created in their mother's womb, right, that we read in Psalms 139, um, or that we can read in Psalms 139. 
they were created in their mother's womb by God themselves, but they're born with a dead spirit. Their spirit is not alive because of the choice of one man, Adam and, Adam and Eve. And so before we came to Christ, before we were, go, we, we were as we termed, saved, um, we were also dead. And um, once we accepted the Lord, Ephesians 2.1 says, um, as for you, you were dead in your transgressions and your sin. And so um, we were dead spiritually. So Jesus came to, to remove that separation so that we could have access to God and that we would be fully alive back to the original design that God created us to live eternally and have eternal life with him. So, um, you know, many people believe that eternal life is something that we get when we die, but that's not true. First John 5, 11 and 12 says, and this is the testimony God has given us eternal life. This is life in his son and who has the son has he who has the son has life and he who does not have the son does not have life. So every Christian is alive in Christ right now. Um, to be alive means that your soul is in union with God, your spirit, I would say. Throughout the New Testament, you'll see repeatedly, you'll see this truth over that you are in Christ or that Christ is in you. And this is the life that gives us our, our eternal identity or our essential identity. So Colossians 3, 10 and 11 says, we have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge of of the image of its creator. So that's what we're doing in who I am is we're putting on our new self that we were instantly created new. We're a new creation when we accepted Jesus, when we became saved and we were translated from that life of those beliefs and that system and, um, and transferred into the kingdom of God. So now he says, these are all these things are true about you. And we have the choice to choose those and bring them into ourselves and start living the truth that we are these things. And that is a super easy explanation of salvation. The problem is, is we say the sinner's prayer or we ask God to come in and we don't change anything in our lives. We don't renew our minds. We don't have our wounds healed. We don't change our belief systems. We don't work on the forgiveness of the people that have harmed us in the past. And we don't tell the enemy to move out of our lives because so many of us think it's just us. And so salvation opens the way for us to have communion and access to God Moment by moment, he lives within us and he wants to lead, guide, and direct us. He wants to bring us into an abundant life, right? Jesus said that the scripture says in Galatians 5, 1, it is for freedom. Christ set us free. He set us free because he wants us to be free. You can say free from what? Free from the expectations, the strangleholds, the bondages, the thought processes, the pressures, the stresses, um, Every, all of those ladder rung things that we think that we have to achieve, we're set free from. Because now, as I pray all the time, this is your problem. It's not my problem, God. Figure it out. I am instructed in your word to acknowledge you in all my ways and you'll direct my path, right? I'm also acknowledged in your word that if I seek you first, then you're going to take care of everything else. So if I'm seeking you first, my one true responsibility is to love you and to seek you fully, then I don't have to worry about anything else because then it becomes his problem because that's what his word says and he's always faithful to his word. That's what salvation is. And so we work through our whole lives trying to embrace everything that God has for us and to move away from all the things that the enemy would like us to believe about who we are and our circumstances, that we have to take care of this, that we have to fix this. We don't. Once we give our lives to Jesus, that's exactly what it is. We gave our life to him. Now it's his problem um, and his delight, truly. That's what the scripture says. So as we continue through this study, I want you to start believing these things that we're saying about each other, about ourselves every day, that we're declaring over ourselves. And if you need more study, get out a different version. Go through and look up every word. Do the work that you need to do to make sure that these things are getting put clear down completely into your spirit so that not only are you positionally new, but you are functionally new as well. And so your mind will be, removed, be renewed, your, your wounds will be healed, the enemy will have to flee because he doesn't have anything to hang on to, and you, my dear friend, 
are saved and you are a child of God and you are in the kingdom of God. God bless you. I look forward to our next time together.